Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about the basics of getting started with Power Apps. There are two basic ways to get started, from the Power Apps homepage or from the Integrate menu of a SharePoint list. This video will highlight getting started using a SharePoint list. Before we create our app together, let's take a quick tour of the Power Apps homepage. To find Power Apps, go to Microsoft365.com and click the App Launcher icon in the upper left-hand corner, otherwise known as the Waffle. Scroll through the list and then select Power Apps. From the home screen, you can see the option to create a blank app, start from a Dataverse table, from SharePoint, or even from Excel. Today, we're going to build our app from a SharePoint list. But if you scroll down, you will see that there are other options available for your data source as well. In the next section down, there are some learning modules provided by Microsoft. These lessons are a great way to get a feel for what Power Apps can do. At the bottom of the page, you will see your apps. There are two kinds of apps, model-driven and a Canvas app. A model-driven app can be seen by anyone in the organization once it has been created and only the admins can delete them. They are used when building an app for an end-to-end -end business process. They can only be used with Dataverse and will require a premium license. Canvas apps are used when creating an app for a specific task and they are more flexible. For today's demonstration, I will show you how to build a Canvas app. I've noticed that model-driven apps tend to be at the top of the list. Where I work, there are a lot of them, so this can sometimes make it difficult to find my Canvas apps. However, I have discovered that if you click on the type column, the sort will change and the Canvas apps will pull to the top. Now, in this demo environment, there aren't very many apps, but keep this in mind when you get back to where you work. Now, I'm going to go to the left-hand navigation menu and click on the Create item. The thing that is different on this page is that you can see a few Microsoft templates that can help you get started with your application. Notice that some of the templates say Model Driven and others say Canvas. Even if you don't use the template for your app, they can be nice to review just to get ideas on how to design or organize the app you have in mind. Another way to create a Power App is to start directly from a SharePoint list. I have navigated to a sample list that has some information about Power Platform tools that have been created in my fictional company. At the top of the screen, click the drop down next to the word Integrate, then choose Power Apps, and then Create an App. A pane will open from the right side of the screen. Give the app a name and then click on Create. Power Apps will automatically use the data from the list to create a simple three screen application. This may take a few minutes depending on how much information the list contains. Once Power Apps is done setting up the three screen app, we will be in the Power Apps Studio. Before making any changes to the app, let's go to the upper right hand corner and click the play button or F5 to preview the three screens that were automatically created. You will be taken to the browse screen. Power Apps has made a best guess about what information you would like to see when someone first opens the app. In this example, it is the name of the tool, the application used, and the category. If I click on the arrow for the first tool, I will go to the details screen where I can see more information. The difference between the browse screen and the details is that on the browse screen, Power Apps picked the top few fields that may help people understand what the list is about. The details screen shows all of the columns. If you click on the pencil icon at the top, you will see an edit screen where it will be possible to update the details for the selected entry. For example, I might want to change the title to accounts receivable. The app is connected to the list, so if I save this update, the app and the list will both reflect the new category. Now that we know what the basic app looks like, let's click on the X or the escape button to return to edit mode. We're going to talk about some basic navigation in the Power App Studio while making a few changes to customize this app. The main part of the screen is separated into three parts. On the left side of the screen, we have the tree view. You can use this menu to select different elements of the app and it is organized by screens. This sample app came with three, browse, detail, and edit. 
When you click the drop down next to a screen name, you will see the list of elements that are on the screen, such as a search icon or the text box where the app user would type a search term. If you do not like the name Power Apps has assigned to an element, you can click the three dots next to it and select rename. One of the reasons some people like to change the names of the elements is that Power Apps will assign generic names such as label app name one, label app name two. As the app gets more complex, it may be difficult to remember which option to modify. In this example, these are all labels at the top of each page. I will rename label app one to home label. Click on the three dots, select rename, and type home label with no spaces. A suggested best practice is to modify the names at the beginning so you know which label to reference in any formulas you may use. With that done, let's look at some other parts of the Power Apps Studio. In the middle is the canvas and on the right side is the properties pane. Whatever is selected in the tree view is also selected on the canvas and will change the choices you have in the properties section. For example, if I choose search icon one from the tree view, a box appears around the magnifying glass in the upper left hand corner of the app. And the properties section shows me options for customizing the search icon. The light gray is hard to see and I want to draw attention to the search bar. From the properties pane on the right hand side of the screen, I'm going to scroll down to the color section and click the text color box. This will open up a color picker and I can choose anything that I want. In this example, I'm going to choose a blue color. You can also use the size fields to change how large or small the icon is. Alternatively, you can use the mouse to grab the handles around the selected icon and resize it. Doing this will update the values in the properties field. I don't really need an oversized search icon, so I will reset it back to the original size. This was just an example of how you can modify an element of the app in different ways. Now let's look at the formula bar. It can be used to add, edit, or remove functions relevant to the selected item. I selected the title of the page, the home label. The only formula here is the title in quotations. This means whatever's in the quote will display as text on the app. I call this Power Platform Demo, but I want to change the name. It will be updated to Power Platform Tools. I still cannot see the whole title, so I'm also going to modify the font size and the properties and drop it to a 20. The next change I want to make is to remove the name of the application used. We have an icon to indicate the platform, so the words seem redundant to me. The application name is called Subtitle 1 in the tree view. When this is selected, you can see this item application in the formula bar. So this is telling us that the data is being pulled from the application column on the SharePoint list. I can delete this formula from the bar to remove the name from the browse page. The update will apply to all items on the browse screen. There is too much white space between the title of the tool and the category assigned to it. I will select the word training and move it up a bit. Notice that the category moved for all items on the list. This section of the app is called the browse gallery. When you make a change to one item in the gallery, all items are updated. This looks better. So now I want to draw your attention to the toolbar at the top of the screen. This is where you'll find options to add more data, add a new screen, choose a theme, change the background color, or add an image. For example, I want to change the background color of the app to match the branding of the company that I work for. When I click on background color, I have the same options that I already showed you when we changed the search icon color. In this example, I'm going to choose blue again. Next, I will click on the three dots for more options and choose settings. A settings dialog box will appear. On the general tab, you can change the name of the app, give it a description, etc. Let's scroll down a bit so that we can look at the default setting for data row limit. This tells the app how many rows of data to pull in and it is set to 500. This can be changed to a maximum of 2000. For this example, I can't imagine having more than 500 apps in my database, so I'm going to leave it with the default. Now let's click on the display option in the left hand navigation of the dialog box. This is where you will go to change the screen orientation of the app. 
By default, it is in portrait and is preferred when designing an app that will look good on a mobile phone. If you want landscape, click the drop down arrow to change the orientation. I will close the settings dialog box so that we can go back to the app and continue customizing it a bit. On the toolbar, there is a new screen option. I can insert a blank screen and build it from the ground up, but Power Apps has some templates to choose from. As a person who does not have a developer background, I find some of the templates to be very useful because I can add a page and it works out of the box. In this example, I want to add an email page to the app so that people can send me a message if they want to submit a new Power Platform tool. The page is added and works with no configuration from me. If you want to test it, you can go to the upper right hand corner and click the play button or click F5 to put the page into preview mode. Now I can search for an email address and this is connecting to the company's global address list. After that, I can add a subject and message and then click the submit arrow at the top right corner of the app. The page is pretty good, but it is missing two things, a description of how to use this email and a way to get back to the other pages in the app. To solve this issue, I will insert a text box and a navigation button. Go back to the toolbar and click the insert dropdown. Select text label. It will be added to the top of the screen, so I'm going to grab it and drag it down to the bottom. Notice the dotted line that shows up. This is Power Apps giving me a guideline to help me make sure the box is centered on the page. I will quickly type my message and now people know that they should use this email form to submit a new tool to the database. Next, I will go back to the insert button and click the drop down again. This time, I'm going to add a button. Once again, it is added to the top of the page and I will move it to the bottom. Now I will go to the properties pane and in the text field, I'm going to rename the button to home. Now we need to tell the button what to do. First, select the button. I want to draw your attention to the top left of the screen. The first box says on select. So this is telling the app when I click the button on select, do something. The formula bar says false, meaning Power Apps doesn't know what to do yet. This is where you're going to need a basic understanding of formulas. If you use formulas in Excel, this may be familiar to you. This button needs to navigate to another page. When I type N, Power Apps suggests a few options and navigate is the top choice. As a beginner, these tips are very helpful. Type and open parentheses and Power Apps will give a list of places that you can navigate to. In this example, choose Browse Screen 1 and then close parentheses. The formula is complete so we can test it. This time, instead of putting the app in preview mode, I am going to use the Alt key and click just the home button that we created. The Alt key tells Power Apps to make just the selected item active. The test worked. We are now back on the home screen. However, the email page is not connected to the rest of the pages yet. This app came with a button that will allow people to submit their own data, but I want to review each tool first. So I will change the behavior of the plus sign at the top right side of the app. Instead of saying on select new form, I'm going to delete this formula and I will change it to say on select navigate to screen one. So in this example, I've repurposed an existing button and changed its behavior. But let's test it and make sure I did it correctly. Hold down the Alt key, click the plus sign, and sure enough, we're at the email page. Hold down the Alt key again and click the Home button, and that will take us right back to the beginning of the app. I think my app is good to go, so now it's time to publish it and share it with my team. As we have been working, Power Apps has been quietly auto-saving in the background but I'm going to click on save in the upper right hand corner just to double check. Then I will go to the last icon on the toolbar, which is the publish button. A pop-up box will appear asking you to verify that you want to publish this version. Click on publish this version. The app is published, but nobody can see it yet because I didn't share it with anyone. There are two ways that you can share your app. In the toolbar in the upper right hand side, you will see a share button. Now let's pretend that I forgot to share. I'm gonna click the back button and leave the app. We are back on the Power Apps homepage. I will use the left navigation menu and select apps. 
Here you will see the app we just created together. Click on the three dots for more options and choose Share from the menu. A pane opens from the right. This is where you can enter a name, email address, or everyone. The Everyone option will share the app with the whole organization, but here's a tip. If you share with everyone, it is important that the underlying data for the app also be shared with everyone. If not, when people open the app, they will see a blank page. In this example, I only want to start by sharing with my coworkers, Nestor and Adele. I will type their names in the sharing box. Notice when I added Nestor and Adele, a check mark was placed next to each of their names. If I place a check mark in the co-owner box, Adele and Nestor will become co-owners of the app and can use, edit, and share the app. They cannot delete the app or change the owner. By default, a check mark is in the send an email invitation to new users box at the bottom of the pane. I have the option to put in a customized message. So I'm going to ask my coworkers to test the app and make sure it works the way they intended before it is shared with more people. When I'm done with that, all I need to do is click share. And there you go. We have created our first app and shared it with a couple of people. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like or subscribe. It really helps my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.